All ideas come from somewhere else. It's an accumulation and iteration of our thoughts, experiences, and references that we connect together in novel and interesting ways. That's creativity in a nutshell. In this video, we'll teach you a process on how to utilize references to generate ideas for your next design project. Our guest instructor for today is award-winning motion designer and director, Tom Crate. He's worked 20 years in the business of design and animation for clients like Nike, Jaguar, and Microsoft. Enjoy this video with Tom Crate. Hello, I'm Tom Crate, and today I'm gonna to show you how you can use references to come up with more and better ideas for your projects. Stay tuned. In a minute, I'm gonna share with you a five-step process I use whenever I'm coming up with ideas for a new project. But before I do, I just want to address a common misconception I hear around the idea of creativity. And that's namely this idea that it's something that you either have or you don't. And that truly creative people can somehow pluck an idea out of thin air. Well, the truth is that nothing is created in a vacuum. So even if you're not drawing inspiration from images you've seen in a book or on the internet, you're still referencing things that you've seen or experienced in the past. Your mind is basically one giant mood board. And if it's anything like mine, it's a freaking mess in there. So in order to get clear, vivid ideas that we can share with a client or members of our team, we want to get our references where we can see them and organize them. In the words of Picasso, great artists steal. Let's go steal some stuff. Step one is understand the brief. So the first thing we wanna do is just absorb all the information we have available to us around the brief. We wanna ask questions like, what's it for? Who's it for? What kind of emotions are involved? We really wanna drill down to the essence of what we're trying to communicate. It can be helpful to break it down into a few key words that really sum up the essence of this communication. Step two is stop thinking. Now this might sound a little bit weird, but coming up with ideas is a bit like trying to sleep. The harder you try, the harder it gets. So the idea here is to clear our mind so that the space for new inspiration to come in. Step three is explore. So now we've let go of this idea of trying to think of ideas. We just wanna get in touch with the emotions and the feelings involved in what we're trying to communicate and let that be our guide as we start collecting imagery. Step four is organize. So once you've got a good bunch of images that you're happy with, it's time to arrange and organize these images in terms of common visual themes. Step five is solidify. So now it's time to put our logical mind to use again and start to describe the common visual elements and how they communicate the core concepts from the brief. So that's the process in a nutshell. Now let's take a look at how that might work in practice. Okay, so I'm just gonna take you through that process now using the example of a project that I worked on recently where I had to come up with some concepts for a pitch for a TV show opener. Uh, the TV show was a crime drama and the story was basically about interrogation and they're trying to figure out what happened by interviewing a bunch of people. So the kind of core concepts were this idea of subjective versus objective reality and how like the truth can be distorted from different people's perspectives. So once I kind of soaked in all that information and created some keywords, I'm ready now to dive into the ocean of inspiration that is the internet. Let's do this. Okay, first things first, I'll usually find myself a playlist, something that's gonna help me get into the right vibe. And once I got that running, it's time to fire up the old browser. And the first stop today is Pinterest. Pinterest is a great start because it's a really good way of organizing and finding similar images. But don't just stop there. It's important to spread your net as far and as wide as you can. For example, if I'm coming up with ideas for a motion design project, I wanna go way beyond anything motion design related, at least for now. So I wanna be looking at painting, sculpture, installations, architecture, photography, you name it. The weirder and the more eclectic, the better. And I'm just gonna save everything that resonates. Sometimes some really cool ideas might pop up and you can always make a quick note of it in your sketchbook, but then just let it go and keep riding those waves of inspiration. So here's the board where I've been saving all my references for this project. And now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start organizing them. Now there's a few ways you can do this. You can 
either just save them to your hard drive and put them in folders. There's also a, a handy feature in Pinterest that allows you to create individual pages so you can split things up into categories. So I'm gonna do that here and just start picking out images that feel aligned with certain ideas. So there's some images here that I liked with this puzzle effect. So I'm just gonna group those together. I'm gonna to create a page called puzzle and just throw them in. So I'm just gonna keep on sifting through all these images that I've found and sorting them into categories based on common visual themes. And as I do, some of these concepts should start to become a little clearer to me. So while we're on this image here, what stood out to me was this kind of nice graphic representation of duality where there's an image of a woman and then there's a sort of a secondary layer of color which could be applied in many different ways. And this whole idea of a puzzle, like those kind of puzzle games where you have to slide the tiles around and it somehow ties into this idea of the interrogation and trying to figure out what happened, sort of puzzling it out, putting pieces together. And here's another one I liked. So the most obvious theme here is distortion. There's also a, an idea of duality here, I think, because you kind of have this idea of beauty with this kind of like a fashion model. And then it's, it's something kind of grotesque about the way it's distorted. And aside from that, it's just an interesting image. It's it's very graphic with the black background and the high contrast and the, the accent of the very saturated makeup. I already have an inkling of how maybe this could be applied to footage to create an intro or a teaser. Footage could be distorted, faces, places, things like that. Things that seem normal and then could be changed to create another more interesting, different kind of composition. So now I've organized all of my references and now it's time to bring my logical mind back online and start to flesh out these visual ideas into something a bit more concrete. So I like to use Google Slides just because it's super easy and simple. You can just drag and drop. You don't have to think about anything else. And this isn't for presentation at this stage. This is purely for me to get down my ideas. So here you can see I've got a collection of some of these different ways of representing that puzzle idea. And I'm just gonna write down how that can apply in the context of the brief. And so the references I've chosen here also represent some different applications. So I've got some very graphic representations. I've got typography. I've got a more literal jigsaw puzzle effect and then more abstract combinations of typography and images. And I'm just gonna write a few words about how these images could tie together into some kind of narrative or simply some interesting visual animation devices. And you can see from just a few hours of searching online, I've come up with quite a few different concepts. So here's another concept that came through with this idea of a light bulb that kind of represents that idea of interrogation. If you think about an interrogation room with like a raw light bulb in it, playing with reflection and refraction and how that can be used to distort images and also light and dark. So I've just written a note that's, that sums up those concepts without trying to sound fancy or trying to sell the idea at this stage. This is really just for me to share with members of my team and throw some ideas around. So it's just a brief overview that should communicate to me or somebody else how these images connect and communicate the key concepts from the brief. Some of them might overlap slightly, but the goal is really to cover as much ground as possible. And I kind of see the whole process a bit like panning for gold. You're kind of sifting, filtering down all of these ideas to, to you get to some nuggets. And then once you got those nuggets, you can polish them up into something beautiful, hopefully. And just to give you an example of where you could take this, here's some pages from a treatment for a project I worked on with Tendril. So pitching an idea for a commercial for a smart TV. We have a couple of pages of mood boards. There's a page here addressing one of the core concepts of the branding message. It's trying to convey a sense of kind of epicness using landscapes and mysterious objects. Suggestions of an idea of DNA, which reflects an idea of a sort of heritage and also an evolution and a kind of futuristic vibe. And then here's a page describing one of the features of the TV, like the audio quality of this product and how we could represent sound in different ways that are keeping with the concept that we're creating. If you're gonna write up these ideas for a client in the form of a pitch, for example, obviously you want everything to be nicely presented. I think the most important thing is just to remove everything that's unnecessary. So just pick the best images that really speak to your idea. 
In terms of writing, like I really enjoy writing, but even if you're not confident at all with your writing style, I don't think it's important. I think what's important is that you have an idea that you're inspired by and passionate about. And if that's the case, I think that will come through regardless. So really my advice would be just to keep everything short and simple and clear. Too much vocabulary, too many fancy words is gonna keep it all in the mind. And it's actually gonna take away from the feelings of the idea, which is where the real inspiration happens. That's where people really buy into an idea. So there you go, that's the process I use to generate ideas using references. And if you're new to the idea of using references like this, I highly recommend making a habit of collecting and curating stuff that you find online or even out there in the real world. If you see stuff that's interesting or weird or inspiring, take a snapshot or a video and you'll be creating a kind of repository, a resource of images and stuff that you can use for future projects. And not only that, you'll also be developing a kind of design language. You'll be developing your own sense of style and your own design eye. That's it. I hope it was useful. And I'm going to hand you back over to Matthew at the future. Thanks, Tom, for sharing that wonderful process. It's very similar to what I use when developing creative ideas for my clients. If you want more of Tom Crate, you can check out his work and courses on his website at tomcrate.com. And if you learned something new or have a question about what you saw today, let us know in the comments below. Tom and I will be scanning through them and answering the best we can. If you want to level up your own design and business skills, don't forget to check out our free resources and courses at thefuture.com. That's it for us. I'm Matthew Encina, and we'll see you in the future.